Hey everyone, today I'm having a look at the Fractal Design Arc mid tower case. Now this case has an incredible amount of cooling. It fits up to eight fans. It has seven expansion slots, eight hard drive bays for 3.5 inch and 2.5 inch drives and two 5.25 inch bays. Looking at the front of the case you can see a Fractal Design logo at the top then two 5.25 inch bays then a mesh area with a dust filter behind it behind this you can install two 140 millimeter fans looking at the front panel of the case you can see a reset button then we have microphone and headphone out the power button with an LED Then we have two USB 2 ports and a single USB 3 port. Looking at the top of the case you can see this huge mesh area with a dust filter underneath it which goes from one end of the case to the other. This can actually be removed. All you have to do is remove the two thumb screws here on the back of the case and this mesh area just pulls straight off. You just pull it back and then up to expose all the fan options underneath. It took me a while to figure it out actually because there's so many different fan mounting holes all over the place. Okay, so the options are three 120mm or 140mm fans or a 180mm fan and at the same time a 140 millimeter or 120 millimeter fan. Now unfortunately you can't install a 360 millimeter triple radiator in the top but you can install a 240 millimeter radiator. The mounting holes for the 240 mil radiator are moved right out from the motherboard tray so I'll just try and show you which holes they are. So it's these holes here. So you can see the distance from here to the back of the case is quite huge, approximately 100 millimeters, which gives plenty of room for the memory and the motherboard. So just having a look at the back of the removable top panel of the case you can see that the dust filter is removable just by bending up the mesh that's holding it on you can see it's quite dense so certainly not much dust is going to get through a 140 millimeter or 180 millimeter fan can be installed in the side panel. Just a quick look at the inside of the side panel. Included with the case is a user manual. This fan controller which fits into an expansion slot and supports up to three fans. The necessary cables for the fan controller. Two massive cable ties. A 5.25 inch to 3.5 inch drive bay cover converter. Now for a look at the inside of the case. So you can see that the hard drive bays, the expansion slot covers and also the blades of the included fans are white. So the included fans are Fractal of course and there's a 140mm on the back, another 140mm in the top at the back and a 140 millimeter in the top at the front. Just some specifications on the included Fractal 140 millimeter fans. So they're 25 millimeters thick, have an RPM of 600, which is quite low. Also, extremely low noise at 9 decibels, and they push 39 CFM. So now looking at the 8. 3.5 inch slash 2.5 inch bays. The top hard drive cage can actually be removed 
in order to install longer graphics cards. Just a quick look at one of the drive mounts. It is four rubber grommets to prevent vibration. The drive mounts click securely into position, but they also have thumb screws for extra stability. So I've just removed the top hard drive cage to have a look. So the hard drive cage just slides in and out quite easily and is secured in place by two thumb screws here and here. There's actually an extra optional 3.5 inch or 2.5 inch drive mount which fits into one of the 5.25 inch drive bays. Looking at the bottom of the case you can see a 120 millimeter or 140 millimeter fan mount. Also ventilation for the power supply and four mounts topped with rubber. So you can see this is designed for shorter power supplies. According to Fractal, a 170mm power supply can be installed while this fan mount position is being used with a 140mm fan. If you wanted to install longer power supplies, you can always not use this fan mount position. Here there is a very dense foam type material around the power supply mounting area to prevent vibration. Now looking at the rear expansion slots so there's seven of them and there's also an extra one out here for anything that doesn't need to be mounted into the motherboard such as the included fan controller. Okay now having a look at the motherboard tray so this case fits mini ITX, micro ATX and ATX motherboards so looking at the cables you can see that the front panel USB 3 is designed to plug into an internal USB 3 motherboard header. Now the rubber used in these cable management cutouts has been much improved since the Fractal R3. It's a lot harder, the grommets don't fall out as easily anymore, it's a much more high quality material. So You've got a large cutout down here for all the power supply cables to come out into the back of the case. You've got another large one there. Another large one there for the optical drive bay cables and possibly the motherboard power cable. And two smaller cutouts up there for the EPS power cable etc. Here there's a nice large cutout in the back of the motherboard tray. Looking into the top of the case, you can see the included Fractal 140mm fan and all the other fan mounting positions. Okay, now looking from the back of the case, you can see the extra mounting holes for a 120mm fan. So this mesh here is actually raised slightly by about 5mm. Also two water cooling tubing grommets. Now down the bottom here is a long dust filter that goes right under the power supply ventilation area and also underneath the 120mm slash 140mm fan mount in the bottom of the case. So this entire case is completely dust filtered. So dust management is going to be quite easy with this case. Now for a look at the back side of the case. There's plenty of these for cable management for hooking cable ties through. You can see the placement of the nice big cutout in the motherboard tray for changing out CPU cooler backplates. This gap is certainly big enough for passing cables through and there's even another cutout just here for cable management. The distance from the motherboard tray to the side panel is approximately 25 millimeters. The distance from the side of the 5.25 inch bays to the side panel is approximately 40 millimeters. And the distance from the hard drive cages from just here to the side panel is approximately 60 millimeters, which is a massive amount of space for cable management. Just a look from the rear side of the case. 
You can see the back side panel is blank and flat. Looking from the bottom of the case you can see the massive removable dust filter and the metal and rubber standoffs. So I've just removed the entire front panel of the case. It's actually very easy to do. You just give it a pull from the bottom and it all clips out quite easily. So you can see the sides of the hard drive cages. So I thought I'd show you some hardware inside the case. So this is the hardware that I'm going to be using. The Asus F1 A75 V Pro. The AMD A8 3850 APU. 4GB of Corsair Vengeance and a Corsair CX430 power supply. Alright, so I've got the hardware installed into the case. So keep in mind this is an entry level system, it's just a very basic system. As you can see I haven't populated all of the fan positions. I'm just using the stock fans that came with the case. So I've just got one hard drive installed. You can see I've got the front panel USB 3 plugged in to the motherboard. I'm using a non-modular power supply. A quick look at the cable management. Okay, unfortunately I don't have any full thickness 240mm radiator sitting around, but I do have this 120mm radiator, which is 45mm thick, and I have it sitting exactly where the radiator is supposed to sit. So consider that this could be a double radiator, a radiator exactly double this size, so that would fill that spot over there as well. But the point is, you can see that there is about 10 to 15 millimeters of clearance over the top of that memory. Now that memory is Corsair Vengeance with the tall heatsink. It's not low profile, and even with the tall heatsink, the radiator still has plenty of clearance over it, which proves that a radiator of basically any thickness can be installed into this case as long as it's a 240mm radiator. The thickest radiators to date are just over 60mm, so full thickness radiators in this case, absolutely no worries. So another amazing case from Fractal. The design and quality is exceptional. Being able to fit a 240mm radiator in the top of a mid-tower case, a full thickness radiator, is just awesome. I actually can't fault this case, except for the side panel. It would be great if there was a windowed side panel. Okay, so that sums up this video. Please subscribe and give me a thumbs up. Thanks everyone.